Hello and welcome everybody to Be The Wellness Podcast. Adam and Vanessa Lambert doing the podcast. Does my face look so awake and bright? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for three o'clock in the afternoon, you're looking pretty awake. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Given what we know about your cortisol, you're about to crash. <laughs> I'm going down <laughs> it's any going second. Down any second. So we got to get this done before you literally pass out. It's true. Um, so we have a really fun guest on today and again, you know, I love to scour the depths of the internet to find cool and interesting guests to bring on the, on the podcast and Fumiko is no exception. She has developed a method called the face yoga method and it's literally a way to train the muscles in your face to reduce the looks of aging or saggy skin or just whatever it is, the asymmetry And and really help you to look younger, brighter, more awake, all of those good things. Less angry. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Which is well, nice. one of the things I think is super interesting is she points out that you just have these subconscious facial habits. Yes. That, like, I mean, I know what mine are. I'm kind of. <laughs> yes. They're not. They're not super subconscious. I'm like, wait a second, am I frowning again? Because like everybody looks at me and they're like, whoa, they is look away. Mad? I'm like, hmm, I look mad again, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just one of those things, you know. No, it's true, and I think that like no one has ever said to me throughout my life like like to even pay attention to like the way my face rests or the right. way that I am with my face. Like no one's even <laughs> said like, oh, you could, you know. You should stop doing that. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like just stop looking down and scowling at your phone or just whatever, yeah. you know, like you hear about things in terms of your neck and your spinal alignment and things like right. that when it, you know, uh, in regards to your head. But like mm-hmm. no one ever talks about the way you move the muscles in your face and how it changes the way you look. And also the interesting thing here that we talk about is that it changes the way you actually think and like the yeah. the hormone yeah. and the way you feel. Yeah. 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 It's pretty interesting. Like my situation is that with my right eye, I can move my eyebrow up like the rock. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the big crook of the eye. Yeah. And my left one does not move independently. Yeah. Like period. There's no like connectivity there. Neuro connectivity. Well, it's not independent. So right. like it's either both of them go up right. or the right one goes up. Right, right. You know, and apparently that's like completely changeable. You can, you know, have you can go in, you or. can have either one. <laughs> but what's what's fascinating and it's like, well, what why does that matter? What do you need to be yeah. able to like throw a weird eye to the left, you know, here and there. But the reality is like just with like with everything that we do from a proprioceptive training perspective and all of these things where we're trying to master parts of our body. It's like one of those ones you don't really think about. It's kind of like your toes. You're like, yeah. can I move my pinky toe independently of the one adjacent to it? Yeah. You know, and and turns out it's a similar situation with your face. Yeah, no, and it's, I just think it's really interesting because obviously we are health and fitness, wellness people. And like, I just think it's interesting to find all these little nooks and crannies of how you can take care of yourself. And this is one of them that just stood out to me. And it was pretty funny because Adam and I pretty much – we sit across from each other when we record the po- podcast and we pretty much just made faces at each other the whole time while we're hearing what Fumiko has to say about the about the program. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, totally. So anyway, Fumiko is just absolutely adorable. And I just, yeah, her personality is just really sweet. And I really enjoyed yeah. our conversation. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good one. She is available on all the things yes and all the links will be down below but she is face yoga method yeah almost everywhere Mm -hmm. but yeah check down below for the links and uh, without further ado here's Fumiko Fumiko. and we're live welcome to the podcast Fumiko thank you this is um one of the cool things I mean I'm always talking to our guests about how I discover or sorry I'm always talking to our audience about how I discover our guests and I'll, oftentimes it is through social media and that is just the case with you Fumiko um obviously you're out there in the Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube and all of the social media worlds and I see this program that comes across my I think it was Facebook talking about the face yoga method. And of course that piqued my interest. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about your background and what this face yoga method is. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here, Vanessa, and finding me. 
to begin yeah, with. No, <laughs> I, I love to scavenge. If I find something interesting, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get to them. Where are they? Oh. <laughs> I need to find them and talk to them about this. So yeah, it's it's one of the things we love to do is introduce our audience into, you know, unique and interesting sort of wellness or even just life things, you know, things that are just interesting in the world. So you definitely piqued my interest. So w- tell us a little bit about, about your background. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm from Japan originally. I got education and everything in Japan. Japan and I went to uh, one year in Canada and I fell in love in Canada. I thought I'm going to stay there forever, but I have to go back to Japan to finish my degree. And I went back and then I came to United States to finish my master's degree in cultural anthropology. It's nothing to do with what I'm doing right now in life. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's interesting. As it usually is. Yeah, that's, that's a part of life. But anyway, so I got my master's degree in cultural anthropology and I went back to Japan. I taught there in college and I loved my life. It was, it was really wonderful because I had all my freedom as a teacher at the university and living in Tokyo, super exciting. And I thought uh-huh. my life is going to be great like that forever. However, I was around 35. I started seeing a little bit of age on my face. And I love being outdoors. I just love nature. So I really didn't, you know, protect myself from the sun. And I prefer to have more fun in life than cover myself completely. <laughs> we sunscreen. Girl. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Fishing and the scuba diving. So that was one thing I started noticing, but I kind of ignored it. Oh, I'm still young. And then I got in a car accident when I was visiting my friend in California and oh. I, it was very bad. It was very close to, you know, really bad accident. I was, I went to a emergency room by ambulance and I could be dead right there in the spot. But because of the trauma, I wasn't driving. I was in a passenger seat, but I was hit from the side, right side. So it's pretty bad. My body got so out of alignment and then my, body really started feeling the uh, asymmetry everywhere Mm -hmm. and that affect my face and my face yeah everything is connected yeah and my face got so out of alignment and one day I was looking at myself in a mirror I was back in Japan at the time after my accident and uh, my face was out of alignment and on top of the aging thing I felt like I'm losing the confidence and I just really didn't like that way I looked and uh, Mm -hmm. I thought I have to do something so like many people I just went to um, get a facials and start buying expensive creams and I even bought super expensive facial device I you know I could do at home Mm -hmm. and I felt so powerless and I feel like I'm losing my I don't know my power and I can't really Mm -hmm. do anything I have to go and get some help from other people which I didn't like it that much and one day it just dawned on me might as well exercise my face like I exercise my body body because I always exercise and I was always pretty fit and um, the face as a muscle so that's mm-hmm. how I got into the face exercise and eventually I created a program a face yoga method because many people starting noticing the changes my my friends start telling me like you look different. Something look different. You look, Mm. something is not the same. Like, Oh, I'm doing this exercise. I'm trying to look young and trying to make my face more symmetrical. And they wanted to know more about it. And the more people wanted to know about it, I got excited. I started sharing the info and I was still teaching at the university. And I even told my students like, wow, you should start exercising your face (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah you're still young and you can keep the youthful looking so anyway um when publishing company wanted to publish my book and I said no I wasn't any I had no interest doing this you know for my um editing the business on top of my teaching uh-huh. but they really pursued me and I published the book and I started selling really well in Japan and then translated into different languages in all over Asia. And before I knew it, I got Asian, I got a sponsorship and I quit my job teaching at the university and I started doing um, TV shows and uh, all the media over there. 
Yeah. Wow. I know. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, well, this is, it's a cool story because I think that off, this is the coolest stories to me are often ones where you sort of stumble into something that you didn't intend to make it a career. Right. You're just looking for your own personal solution. And then suddenly you realize that there are a lot of other people experiencing the same thing that you are. And there's, you know, you have a real solution for people and something that can help them. Right. That's right. Exactly. Because I didn't want to make this as a career because making funny faces, I don't know, Vanessa, have you seen my <laughs> funny faces? I have right? seen some of the videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's just people laugh at me like, don't you feel very embarrassed doing that? Like, no, it's just for fun. And that's how I started. Uh-huh. Yeah. But interesting thing is that at the peak of my career in Japan, I loved it. Every, you know, every single of things I did, but I just didn't want to continue my uh, my career as a very busy media related to a person. So I left my job really at the peak of my career and came back to the United States. And I married, I got married, a friend of mine, and he, we were friends for seven years. And um, we met in Mendocino. That's where you guys. Got yeah. yeah. Where we met. Yeah. Where Adam and I. Yeah. Funny coincidence. Yeah. yeah. And you're and you're in Northern California now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so you got married and you obviously you left Japan somewhat permanently then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So okay. So you you've got married and you've left the peak of your career. And I bet that was I bet that was a difficult time in some respects because you're really you're giving up a lot. Yes. That's... But you're also gaining a whole new world. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I bet that was, that was tough. Yeah. You know, it's actually, it wasn't tough at all. Interestingly, uh-huh. because you were ready. I was ready. And also it wasn't something I was really seeking for when I was there to, mm-hmm. to be super busy and to be in the media. And I, I just, I just made a decision. I think I listened to my body like, well, it's a time to go time to mm. go for a new adventure. So I did. And I was quite happy and content being a mom and taking care of my family and uh, just doing things I like, which is creating something, making and cooking. But my sister-in-law, Maria, who is my business partner now, she really wanted to create an online business using a face yoga. And I said, no, I don't want to do it because I just didn't know if people like making funny faces and that was something I kind of not sure Mm -hmm. and then second one is um well English is not my first language so it's always a little you know a little bit of extra thing in my mind like oh can I express exactly what I want to express in English and that, that was second thing I wasn't quite sure and third thing is I just didn't want to get too busy I just wanted to enjoy my uh, mm. kind of semi-retired life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so after two years of Maria, she convinced me to try this and uh, we decided to do it. And now after seven years, I'm just loving it. I'm just loving every single, single of it. Amazing. That is so cool. It's so cool. And so maybe you could just tell us a little bit about the technique. First of all, how did you, I mean, how did you literally discover it or create it? Like, what was the process? Were you just in the mirror making funny faces? And like, how did that process of creating something from scratch go? Okay. So the first one is, um, as a cultural anthropologist, I know that when you speak different language, you use different face muscles. So for me, when I speak English, I don't use many muscles like when I speak English. So there's a little bit of differences like, okay, how I can activate this muscle in order to make my face more symmetrical because asymmetry was the biggest issue at the time Mm -hmm. for me. So I started pointing one muscle I wanted to lift up. My left side was much droopier. So I put my finger on the left side eyelid and I tried to activate and I tried to move my eyes certain ways and tried to lift my cheek only on the left side, which is, which was really hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, it's like, it seems like everybody has like the one eyebrow that they can exactly. lift. Exactly. Right. Like yeah. you, can do the, you can do it on one side, but yeah. you can't do it on the other, you know? Yeah. So it's true. a lot of, I've got to think that there's just a lot of um, like neuromuscular sort of signaling, yeah. right? There's just pathways aren't there. Yeah. So it just takes a 
practice. Yeah. And you have to retrain and you have to stop the habit because we create the habit unconsciously. And the more you do it, the muscle memorize it. So you have to stop that movement and then activate the weak side, or I should say the side you're not using. Uh-huh. And when I start doing that, I notice that I'm holding my breath so, so intent, like so tight breath. I was breathing, you know? Uh-huh. So like, wow, my body is not relaxed when I try to activate my face muscle. So I started editing the breathing, just like yoga. Mm. I got to breathe mm-hmm. out and then breathe out and then activate the muscle and then close the eyes. When I close my eyes, I felt much more connection between my my brain and my body. So um, I feel like I might, you know, I'm sending more message to my brain. Right, so right. Close my eyes, and yeah, that's so interesting. So like, because I think you know, people don't even think about the fact that they're controlling their facial expressions, like the way that their face is in its resting position, mm-hmm. or. Know, or that you can actually change the way. And, and I notice it with people, like you can see somebody transform from when they're maybe like focused on something, maybe you're squinting your eyes and then you go to like really happy and joyful and all of a sudden you look younger. Like exactly. your face completely shifts into a way that mm-hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, when you're happier, you look younger, whatever. So it's it, obviously it's possible, but it's so interesting that you honed in on it to like start figuring out exactly which muscles to activate to get the desired effect. Yes. Yeah. And I noticed that when I, when I was able to activate certain face muscles, I start feeling differently. Mm. And then Mm. connection between the muscle movement and also body posture. When I open my chest and open my shoulders by breathing out and squeezing my shoulder blades, like, wow, I feel much more, relax my face mm. and I started seeing the connections between them body and the face and also mind yeah I would think that you would actually I mean I've heard before that if you actually smile mm-hmm. like you you release endorphins or whatever chemicals that like mm-hmm. are happy chemicals right so like I would think that there's some similarities here where if you can make you know practice certain facial expressions it might even affect the chemical response in your body yes exactly I don't know that's not scientific (laughs) no that's my guess it actually is is. so it's it's part of how empathy works so like by by looking at your facial expressions then I can start to mimic those facial expressions it's this I can't remember exactly what they call it but that's part of what releases you know, the, the chemical form of empathy Uh is by mimicking what you're doing. Yeah. Right. So it's a, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's a thing. Yeah. And that's why, so people who get Botox Mm -hmm. start start to lose some level of empathy because they can no longer mimic Mm -hmm. the facial expressions of the people they're dealing with. So So this is, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. The whole thing's connected, you know, it's a, a yeah, it is really. And also now there's a more scientific research done on the facial expressions and the benefit of facial movement. Uh-huh. Because people start noticing, wow, this is a really thing. It happens and it works. Yeah, that is, it's it's really cool. I mean, I think that's why it really did jump out to me when I saw it. I was like, oh, this is so interesting because I could see the application would be so much deeper than just the way your face looks. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could see how it would really affect the way you carry yourself. Even if you just know like, oh, I did these exercises, which my intention behind those exercises were to make myself look more youthful or happy or whatever it is. Even just that intention has to shift the way you feel about your looks. Right. Yeah. We can change your face and change your life. That's, that's what I say. People change your face, change your life. And I didn't mean that, you know, at first, how many people responded so amazingly but now I have so many people practicing and people reported me saying that my life is different completely different the way I feel it the way I see myself the people treat me I mean it's not just you know how many people there's so many people started telling me and that's a that's a very powerful statement to say yeah, no, that is so cool. Like I actually got a little bit of the chills when you talked about that because <laughs> I I think that it's one of those things that you just may not even realize the connection of it all and really what's going on. And so many of us are focused on our bodies. Mm-hmm. We're all very we understand that, 
you know, changing the state of our body changes the state of our mind. Mm -hmm. Like if you go work out, you know, you get endorphins or you like, that's very well understood. Or I feel like that's very well communicated, but this idea of like actually changing your facial expressions and changing the way that your face works to change your life is like, I don't know. That's just like blast yeah. off for me. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you so many sort of pain faces in yoga. Like, so if you go to an actual <laughs> yoga class, there's so many people who they're getting their body into the right position, but their faces just look miserable. And you're like, hmm, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if we're doing this right. You know? oh, so Adam, this is so true. It's just so, I mean, I, I laughed at it so hard because I've seen so many people at the gym, for example, at, or the yoga studio, people say, relax your face. But even teachers, many face, um, uh, body yoga teachers came to me so hard to relax their face. Mm -hmm. because they feel like a body and the face are connected physically, but they don't really know how to relax the face muscle uh -huh. and activate certain muscle isolating and then moving the way they want to move. Yeah, no, it's so true. So it seems like the, just reading through your information and looking at the programs that you have. So it's like, there's sort of two different paths. You can help folks that like have even had strokes or, you know, have literally had like you did like an accident or something where you can help to realign or rehabilitate, if you will, the face. And then there's also this additional, you know, youthful, you know, looking like this youthful concept that you can actually create more youth and symmetry through the exercises themselves. So are those different programs? Or are those one in the same? Oh, different programs. But sometimes, you know, the, uh, the result comes by doing something you think you'll get the result, but another result will come to you. Do, do it make sense? Uh -huh. Like sometimes uh -huh. people say, oh, I just want to get rid of my uh, forehead wrinkles and they don't really expect any mental changes. And then uh -huh. they, they said, wow, I didn't expect that. I'm getting much more benefit mentally than physically. Uh, and, that's so cool. Yeah. That is super cool. So tell us about like maybe one or two clients who had really interesting success stories or just, you know, something that stands out from your clients that you, that you're most proud about. Okay. So there's, <laughs> there's a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> One thing I would say is that the many times people, I mean, many, many of us are very critical about ourselves and we are so good at, you know, finding and pointing what's not good about ourselves. Like, oh, my eyes droopy or my this side of face is not really smooth or I have more lines on this side. So when they compare the pictures, I always tell students take before after photos and compare and they don't believe it. They still need somebody point out how they look differently. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But I remember uh, one student from England, um, she, she went to the pub with her husband and her friends. And then they started talking about whatever, not, not related to face yoga method at all. But when she went to bathroom, all her friends started asking her husband, what she's doing differently. Like she looks different. <laughs> and her husband said, well, she's doing a face exercise. And everybody started practicing face exercise, face yoga <laughs> in the pub. And she said that was really, really fun thing, you know, in public, but they didn't care. They're like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you add a few drinks. I'm sure you're, yeah, you're just care. like, it's perfect yeah. timing. <laughs> so another thing is there's a lot of beautiful stories, but one thing it really touched my heart is that the, one of my students, she's a certified teacher now. She visited her mother who is at the uh, hospital and her mom cannot really move her body. I think she has a stroke or some kind of a, um, a physical issue, but only the face that's where she can just have a control and that's it. Mm -hmm. So every time she visit, my student visit her mother, they practice face exercise together. And then her mother told my student one day, everything she lost except for the movement of the face. And that's one thing she still have a control and that's so worth living. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about that. But like, one of the things I'm sure about being bedridden is just, it's almost like boredom, right? Like you just, you don't have any way to express mm -hmm. your physical 
ability. So I'm sure like even just being able to focus on exercising your face is like, okay, I can express my physicalness right. still. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Wow. That's really cool. So maybe you can tell us because you also do a teacher training program. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that as well. Okay. So the teacher training I started last year, 2017, January. And like anything else in my life, I wasn't planning to do that, <laughs> to <Yeah>. be honest. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to sound like, you know, I don't want to do this, that. But what, right. well, it just, I just I just didn't think the possibility of doing it online because I taught uh -huh. so many years in Japan, in high school and university, com and com communication and cultural communication. And I just couldn't see that I can actually show the poses and without seeing the students and everything online. And I thought, no, for so many years, but I received so many people wanting to be certified to be a teacher so that they can really share the knowledge as a face yeah. of a method teacher. So it took me almost four years to say yes. And one day I just, I just felt like, oh, it's a time. It's just time to do it. And uh, that's how I started. And I wasn't sure how many people I will have as a certified teacher the first year, but we just had an amazing, amazing program. And we have students, now certified teachers from all over the world, 40, 40 different countries at least. I stopped counting after 40. But wow. yeah, and it's just a beautiful community. I just love it so much. Yeah, well, I can tell that, um, you know, this just the, the fact that you – it's it's like I want to say resistant. It's not that you're resistant to it, but I think you are careful about what you wanted to commit your energy mm -hmm. to until yeah. it made really like proper sense to do so. And I think that there's something that comes from that patience and that nurturing rather than full speed ahead, right. which we, Adam and I tend to do the full speed ahead thing. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting, but I think that there's something that, that you can, it's like a flower that you allow to bloom instead of like forcing it mm. to open, you know, it's like, yeah. So that's, that's really cool. I think that it's such an interesting concept. I'm, I'm, do you find that most people that are doing it are also yoga teachers and have an, a, a practice that goes along with it, like an accompanying practice or are most people just doing this method? Oh, just mix up all the people. Like you'll be surprised how many people from different countries and different backgrounds. Some of them never even heard of me, never. And then they just saw me somewhere, um, or, you know, online or something like, oh, I just want to try and change my life. And I remember um, a couple of the people came from corporate back, you know, background, and some of them <laughs> lawyers or well, attorney, and uh, <laughs> they decided to quit the job because not because they wanted to teach face yoga right away, but they are just so ready to change their life. Mm -hmm. the 50s, uh -huh. you know, late 40s, 50s, and they just felt like they had enough of the experience in life, but they're ready for something different, something new, something they really want to use the body and mind and spirit. And I think mm -hmm. that's something they wanted to pursue through face yoga method. And uh, sometimes I feel so honored when they said, oh, I decided to quit my job. My corporate job doesn't really serve me anymore. And I'm going to be a full-time face yoga method teacher. <laughs> so watch out folks yeah. if you start doing yeah. face yoga. You better be ready. You better be ready to quit your job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it is amazing though cuz this is something that it it doesn't happen to us frequently, but it has happened a few times with our um coaching clients and people who they you know, they've been they they usually find us because they're looking for something different mm -hmm. than the normal situation and you know, and over time and through the various programs and coaching and they fundamentally change a big part of their lives, okay. you know, and then sometimes they find that, that they, that they're the new person that they are just doesn't really jive with their old career path or whatever. And so you do see that start to separate, you know, but it's kind of a trip. People are like, guess what? <laughs> I took your advice. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what? No, I, don't yeah. I don't think I said that. But okay, okay, good. I, hope, I hope it's all working out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You can do but it. How, um, I, I'm just thinking that it's, I could just see how this is such a powerful practice, you know, and, and I think that's probably where like the yoga inter the intersection with the yoga really kind of comes in is, and I mean, I'm assuming that most people, like you were saying, are doing this in the privacy of their own home. 
So they're probably somewhere relatively alone, relatively um, like relaxed in a calm space where they can go through these exercises. So it probably even, you know, fills the the meditation and mindfulness quotient for the day, you know, for, mm -hmm. a, for a lot of folks. And what a great way to like, what a great ancillary benefit to your <laughs> mindfulness practice to like square away your face. You know? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> the, yep. the, and I tell so, people that the most private place you can find is bathrooms. Every time you go bathroom, do some face exercises because nobody sees you. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't care, but it happens to many people. Once they started learning a face exercise, it feels really good because releasing stress, anxiety from your face. So I tell students, watch out. You're going to start doing the face exercise. Even when you're not aware, you're driving a car or even at the supermarket <laughs> and you start making funny faces <laughs> and then you don't really know what you're doing because you're right. so used to the <laughs> movement of the face. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So, that's super funny. so what is what does the actual practice look like? Is this like a five minutes a day thing or four times a week? Or what's the how does that work? Well, I recommend um, uh, ideally twice, a, twice a day. So in the morning, when they just got out of bed to mm -hmm. wake the face muscles like the facial muscles. And then before you go to bed, I highly recommend because you want to release any unconscious habit or movement you did throughout the day and just make your face more neutral and go to bed. You sleep much better and you really see the difference next morning because you don't, you don't carry any tension on your face mm. if you do it. So um, that's something. But also throughout the day, do it when you're in the bathroom, driving a car, cooking or watching TV, sitting in front of a computer. And I don't ask students to do 10 minutes or 15 minutes a day. That's another thing. Like, I don't want to push people say, you have to do it in order to get the result. Mm -hmm. You have to just add it to your, any routine you're doing every day mm -hmm. so that it become your second, you know, second nature to your habit. And how long does it take before you start seeing results? Do you see them right away or a couple of days? What, what, when do people generally notice things shifting? So. Sometimes people see the change right away after one session uh -huh. because that really, I really guide them. Okay. Watch the eye, which side is bigger, how your eye look like now, or there's a labia fall lines or jaw line. So I really have them pay attention to that and take a before after pictures. But usually if you don't really take pictures and paying that close attention, you're going to start feeling a couple of days after that, you feel much more awake. Your face is more awake and uh -huh. paying attention to your habit. And that's the first step for me to get to the face you want. And then the physical changes can happen in a week or two weeks. But you have to take pictures because different from the body, which we can often say, oh, my pants are getting tighter or my uh -huh. belly fat. Face you see every single day. So you don't really know you are getting older or you yeah. getting younger or getting more toned. Uh-huh. I'm so in. Yeah. We're going to do this. <laughs> Adam and I, we're going to do the face yoga method and, and take before yeah. and afters. Okay. Yeah. Well, because I think like for me, I've, I don't know, I've always been pretty resistant to pretty much every other anti-aging thing. Like I got Botox one time 10 years <laughs> ago, you know, or, or longer ago than that, you know, but <laughs> It is something that you definitely see. I mean, we, we're Southern California people. We spend a tremendous amount of time outside. We're ocean people. And just like you were saying, we don't, you know, I don't want to have to wear a big hat and slather myself in sunscreen and do all of these mm -hmm. things all of the time. And I mean, granted, there's always, you know, a give and take with that. But if there's another way yeah. of, of doing this, and since we've been here, like, talking about this i've been trying to get my left eyebrow to lift up like my right one does and it oh. won't like i have a i have a really good oh. like cocked eyebrow on the right side i can look very skeptical with my right side but apparently my left side just won't do it you know so i'm like uh oh all right we've I've got identified some deficiencies okay there's a perfect program for you adam it's called uh eye area exercise and making your eye area symmetrical okay. ah so we knew you'd have a solution. Yeah. <laughs> Just follow that and activate your left part of your eye. And then the, you're going to relax your right side so that they're going to get even. Yeah. Yeah. 
So okay. cool. So are these programs, are, I mean, are they delivered in like 21 day blocks? Or are they just, here's, here's the exercises and you just do these, you know, twice a day forever and ever. Oh, uh, we have a different program. So if people really commit it and want to know everything about a face yoga method of pauses, there's a full package, a face yoga method membership site. So you can just go there and then do the forehead area. So the module is based on the area. So forehead area. Lots of pauses, eye area, lots of pauses, and cheek area, lots of pauses. But many people request that they want to have a, like a jump start or every day, you know, they don't need to think about it. They don't need to even pick pause, but just follow the video and do it. So I created the jump starts and nine jump start based on the area. Many people have concerns like forehead jump start or eye area jump start or mouse area jump start. And then Another one is people who do not know what the problem is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, they're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I just am looking all day. Yeah, something. <laughs> so I created that face toning, uh, full face toning jump start. And that is actually doing really, really good because people just go for four days, just focus on forehead. And they have to watch my video and do the pauses. And next four days, they work on the eye area. And they just follow my video and do the poses together. It takes only like five minutes or so, but amazing changes on many people's faces in life. And we have a Facebook group, close group for the face toning challenge. And for 30 days, people just get such a beautiful communication community and support from each other from all over the world. That's so cool. Yeah. I just, I just love it. I don't know why, like it just hit me as such a cool idea. And now that I'm talking to you and learning more about it, like, I just think it, you keep using the word beautiful and it really is. It's like a beautiful thing to spend your time doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, which is always good. Yeah. <laughs> it's always beneficial yeah. to add a little fun in there. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're learning to control a part of your body that maybe you didn't have access right. to before. And that's, I just can't, I, I can't think of a single reason why that wouldn't just be beneficial on all kinds of levels, mm-hmm. like beyond just the way that you look. Right. But so many, like so many levels of gene expression, like if you can't move your arm correctly, you're going to, you're going to walk differently. There's going to be so many things that are different, you know, and I got to think it's probably the same with your face. Yes. And I, you know, the reason I add a body pauses, like sometimes I, I tell people they have to check the body posture in order to get the asymmetrical face. Because if you, for example, injure your big toe, the body tried to compensate it. And as a result, your hip started getting asymmetrical and that affects your shoulder and that affects your face. And one side of face might get higher. So it's a whole concept of like connection between body, mind, and spirit and being aware. I think that's also makes people more aware of who they are and understanding what they want and how they want to look and how they want to feel. Yeah, definitely. So is there, just just occurred to me as you were saying that, is there, like, do you notice um, the way that people's faces are compared if they're right-handed or Mm left-handed? Like, I would think that there's, yeah, there's something that probably happens just from your dominant side. And also uh, dominant eye. That's one thing I noticed that when people... Well, most of us, I think 99.9% of us have a dominant eye. So many people uh-huh. uh, has a right side dominant eye. So that means you use your right eye more than left eye. So uh-huh. you have many people have a tendency of having a droopy eyelid on the left side and can't move yeah. the left side of face as much as right side because you're not really using it. And your right eye tend to get more tired maybe blush on it yeah. because you're using so often and so interesting adam and i are here making funny faces at each other <laughs> trying to see if we can lift our eyes yeah. and move <laughs> no so, no it makes sense i mean i feel like that i've always noticed uh, um you know the dissymmetry in my face but i just thought i'm um, obviously i think most people do have that but it never even occurred to me that i could change mm-hmm. it through exercise oh very possible very, very possible. And also I talked to one of the professors in Japan and he's a doctor, neuroscientist. And he, he told me that by trying to activate certain muscles in the face, because facial muscle is so close to the brain, 
you're activating the part of the brain you're not really using. Mm, totally yeah. makes sense. And it's, it's hard at first because you're not so aware, but once you started making connections and neurons get stronger and you're sending the message more and more, and when they're connected, you feel like, wow, having a new face because you have a, another brain activated. Yeah, it totally makes sense. So where, where, where should people get started? Like what's the best place to kind of get, jump into this? I would say mm, if the person does not know what she or he needs, just say, oh, I want to do exercise. I recommend that take my quiz. It's called uh, Aging Habit Quiz. And go to the website and take the quiz so that I'll guide you what is the unconscious habit a person's doing. And without noticing, and that could be, you know, creating that double chin or asymmetry on your face. Well, for example, looking down and texting, that's a no, no for me, because you're creating double chin so many uh-huh. ways. And if you use your phone, not using a speaker mode or headset or earbuds, you're creating asymmetry on a face and a mouse, like especially the mouse area. So a small quiz like that will um, tell the person what, he or she needs to do using the face exercises. So I highly recommend take the aging habit quiz on my website. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's so cool. I was just thinking about, you know, we got rid of our, we don't really use our couch in our house because we just decided we didn't want to have our hips closed, Mm. you know, always be sitting with our hips closed and all that extra tightness from sitting because we spend so much time sitting anyway in life. But I was just realizing that I lay back on this, this, we call it the love nest and it's kind of like this big dog bed, but it's for humans in the middle of our living room. But it makes my chin like I'm laying back and it like makes my chin double. And I was just thinking, oh, no, I could like that's part that's part of the issue why I'm noticing more wrinkles on my neck. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you're good. So we've got, yeah. so we got to fix it. Okay. So that means you got to sit tall and then feel the pelvis get straight up from the earth to the sky. And that just correcting posture can really help you change your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wow. totally makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So, well, this is so cool. We are definitely going to check it out, and um, we're going to have our own little face yoga method challenge in our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's a great idea. We'll do some before and afters because I'm I'm really interested. Yeah. In, in sorting out what's going on with my left eye. Okay. Please do <laughs> so. I've become internally internally self conscious about it. I'm okay. like. Huh. Please do so, and make sure you take a profile picture too, because people forget to take a picture. You know, profile picture, uh-huh. and that's also uh-huh. another very important thing because we need a motivation, right? We need to see changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So faceyogamethod.com. You can take the quiz there, correct? Yes. Well, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. And we'll so put a link to it in the show notes. Yep. yep. And then you can find you on Facebook at Face Yoga Fumiko. Oh, so, let's see. Facebook, Face Yoga Fumiko, Face Yoga Method on YouTube, Face Yoga Method on Pinterest and Instagram. Yes. Correct? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So lots of places to find you. Did we lose you? No, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Okay. You're there. (laughs) Okay. Lots of places to find you. We're, we're, thank you so much for your time today. This was so fun and just informative. Thank you. It was fun. And also, uh, you know, on the YouTube channel, I have a lots of homemade skincare tips. Like you can use yogurt or egg white, put on your face and reduce your lines and blighten your complexions and lots of things. I just love to create and using something you can really get easily and safe and uh, organic. So try that. And natural. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. This is right up my alley. I love p- making random concoctions and slathering yeah. it on my skin. Yeah. <laughs> Doing the face exercise together. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Fumiko. And uh, we'll we'll be in touch with our before and after. Okay. Thank you. I'm so looking forward to seeing, especially Adam, your asymmetrical yeah. to symmetrical face. Yeah. I yeah. Think- well, because it's pronounced, you know what I mean? So if I can, if I can even some of that out, mm-hmm. it'll really be obvious. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. It's going to be cool. And, and, and not, then I hope maybe he'll be nicer too. Oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's already pretty nice, actually. I can tell that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, okay, Miko, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for your time today. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. And I don't think I-